some governors kick, opinions divided as National Assembly mandates direct primaries for political parties. And as rescue teams oftentimes struggle to save victims, Nigerians want to know the standard operating systems for search and rescue. And we would be reviewing the news dailies on Off the Press this morning. Well, it's a beautiful day. Thank you very much for joining us this Thursday morning here on PLOS TV Africa. We hope you enjoy this next two hours with us. I am Osao Gi Ogbonwa. And I am Messi Boko. As usual, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. It's a very complicated case and uh, he needs to have access to as many councils as he can afford and as the courtroom uh, uh, perimeters can afford. And the, MP, I, uh, the, the courtroom itself had a lot of empty seats that could have taken all of us. But what happened in the final analysis is that the court locked us out. And while we were locked out, the court commenced proceedings without our presence in court and adjourned the matter to 19th and 20th uh, January uh, next year, which we find to be a travesty of justice and a flagrant uh, a violation of Section 36 of Nigerian Constitution, which uh, contains a fair hearing safeguards for defendants. So we're waiting for your next move now. On well, our next we are move. going back to the drawing board. We are not going to take this line, though. Uh, we are going to consider a number of countervailing legal judicial measures. An application challenging the empty charge, some count charge by the federal government against our client to hear it. All right. Then, of course, you are familiar with uh, the constraints that are being exposed to. Yeah. Lawyers are not being given access to the court. Even the, our, some people leaders and professional leaders and our professional leaders are not allowed to come to court. So today we're inside the court. When we are going to go to the court, they insisted that they, they can only allow five members of the legal team to be inside. Only five. And we have at least a maximum of eight persons around with us up there. I'm not talking about those that we are denied access to the court premises. We are outside trying to resolve that issue. Because we can't continue this manner. We have people that came from all the way from Abba today. We have a person who is representing the lawyers here. He's not, he wants not allow access to the court. We have people who are representing Fungi Otoki who we have people who are representing our hands and people. They want to allow access to the court today. So we insisted that the right thing must be done. After we have over nine members of legal team representing the federal government today in court, they were in court. Lawyers, we also have over 10 members of SSS officials right inside the court. Why can't they allow at least some members of legal team defense team to be in court? So they, 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 they refuse to do that. And we are outside, outside the court, the court door trying to resolve these challenges. The court came in, locked the door, then Denied access to the court. Before we could speak to Jack Robinson, the matter has been adjourned to 19th and 20th of January. And I've have, not seen such travesty. I've not seen, tra seen such travesty. I've not seen travesty of justice. We are just told. We are told that they were invited, the court invited our client and the DPP and the prosecutor to have a discussion with them. Even when we are not there. Imagine. Just like what happened on 26th of July. On 26th of June 2021. When he was taken to court without reference to court to us. And he was he was he was he was tried on that day without us being in court. So the same thing repeatedly does itself today. And it's unfortunate. Unfortunately, we are within the courtroom. We are just outside the court door and we are locked outside. I've not seen such this trial moved all the way till 2022. The Nigel team was not allowed into the court by the DSS. There's also a lawyer who came from the United States who was also uh, doing some work, some legal work for Namdekanu, who was also not allowed into the courtroom uh, by the DSS. And that eventually caused some you know, level of chaos and led them to walk out uh, that I really don't think is necessary. And, and, and I'm not sure why we continue to, uh, I wouldn't say politicize, but we continue to just create this level of, of higihaga. <laughs> around Namdekanu's trial. It's it's really not necessary. They you know, first of all would they either would be banning, you know, cameras and, and journalists from the trial or they are, you know, reducing the number of his of his uh, legal team that gets into the into the courtroom. It is just unnecessary. I don't know what exactly the security threat is that the DSS, you know, thinks that they're trying to, you know, curtail. 
Um, is any of his legal team, is any member of his legal team a security threat to the trial? Are they in any way going to interrupt the trial? What exactly is the challenge with having every member of his legal team in court? Mm. You know, well, uh, interestingly, you know, oftentimes I always think that we forget that we're in a democratic dispensation and we, all, we seem to always forget, you know, the tenets of democracy, however, and that calls for a lot of concern. Firstly, you would also would agree with me that it's a public hearing, it's not a secret hearing. And if it's a public hearing, everyone's got a right to walk in there. I, I mean, we can walk in there, you can walk in there, anybody can get into that court and listen and watch. Now, um, another issue that was raised is the fact that they got clarification from the judge as to who and who. And then the judge, the clarification from the judge says, um, his visit is not just limited to her family members, lawyers, anyone can also visit. So it, it's really, it, it doesn't really make sense to me. I, I don't understand. And I'm quite worried. Like I said before, oftentimes we forget that we're in a democratic dispensation and then we begin to behave contrary to it. So it's a public trial. It's not a secret trial. And because it's a public trial, everyone and anyone can actually go, including the fact that there's been some clarification. And that the essence of all of that is that people need to see that justice is served, that there's fair trial, that, you know, yeah. uh, Namdi Kano is treated fairly. Now, it's not about Namdi Kano. It could also be another person. So everyone needs to see that, yes, there's justice and that there's fair trial and fair hearing. Apart from saying, OK, yes, there will be justice, but they need to see how he's treated. They need to see, you know, and hear what's going on. So I am really, really, really worried and I'm totally disappointed that every other time in a democratic, uh, you know, country, a country that practices democracy. And then we begin to exhibit some tenet of democracy thing like we don't know. So I am the one who ordered uh, the police or ordered the men who went to why, invade why, our why house. Did you order? I'm just saying nobody's taking, you know responsibility for that maybe i should take <laughs> but i don't control the police so it, it's the same thing they're working on orders and they will do the bidding the beatings of those who actually you know hired them or who they have I to answer to i just don't and think so it, i just, just don't think I'm, I'm sure they have their reasons why they feel these intimidating tactics you know would be necessary really uh, i'm sure they, they they must have you know because it makes no sense you know if there's going to be a court case at 9 a.m they arrive at 6 a.m you know and, and call on of the place and they you know put dss you know officers everywhere and then they start to pick and choose who can come into the court you know of, of, which of his legal team can come into the court or not it's just it's just very very unnecessary like you said the case has been adjourned till the 19th and 20th of january 2022 would uh, of course continue to follow up in other top trending stories this morning um, an airline in nigeria has suspended one of its staff i remember we spoke about this yesterday <laughs> or two days ago it probably feels and you like said that you were embarrassed yes that uh you know someone was shaming nigerian airlines and the, you know the corruption in there but an airline has suspended one of its staff for soliciting bribes from customers. And this, was, of course, also made headlines yesterday. And I, I read the story and I was excited, you know, because... Um, it feels like they're listening to us. No, 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 no. So <laughs> I think, so I think what happens so, so I think what happens in Nigeria is when you embarrass them, mm. they take action. Mm. It's pretty much the same thing with when David Hunde, Hunde, Hunde um, did a report on corruption in, in, um, in the passport office, I believe, mm -hmm. that the DG of, of um, immigration, I believe, then came and, and there's a story about him dressed, just uh, undercover, you know, and, you know, <laughs> dressed undercover and, you know, try to, you know, apply for a passport you know, and see if he can also catch the criminals in, in that office. <laughs> so when you embarrass them, and that's really what gets, you know, um, gets um, um, offices in Nigeria to work. When they are embarrassed, when there's public disgrace and they've put them, you know, put their shame, you know, for the whole world to see, then they immediately start to work. But they know because they can't say, they can't say that they didn't know that their staff have been corrupt and have been collecting bribes and soliciting bribes from people before. And that's why Fan put out that message that we don't accept bribery. What we accept is thank you. Oh, I don't <laughs> So they know that they've been collecting bribes for a long time. But when you embarrass them like that, then they wake up and say, oh, let's cut one or two persons. And, and that's well, it. so, so I'm, I'm thinking that it should not just be because we actually got that embarrassment because I was, like I, like I would say, it was an attack on me. And uh, of course, on the country, it's an embarrassment. Giant of Africa. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you explain all of that? That someone walks into your country and say, all the sea at your airport is corruption. 
the pictures is correct. I mean, the guy's got some gods. But however, <laughs> it's a good thing to see that, um, you know, this has happened. But it, it shouldn't be a one-off, all right? We should be consistent with the energy. And this is what happens. So when people begin to see that you punish them for some things, uh, some other people would sit up. So someone is going to sit up now and say, oh, yes, we can continue in this uh, you know, kind of behavior. Because a culture, what is culture? It's a practice over time. When people do things over and over again, it becomes a culture, a pattern for them, and, and, and that's what it is. But we're saying that, hey, it's a good one, but this should not just be uh, because we had that video and it should not just be a one-off. We should be consistent with the energy. Uh, they, they know what to do. You know, if they if they really want to wipe out corruption in in those places, in you know, in the airports, they, I'm sure they know what to do. Their supervisors, you know, from top to bottom, all know what to do. Um, you know, sadly, you can't even vouch that the supervisors aren't even part of the whole you know system. You know, that collects little bits of you know bribe here and there. But but you know, at some of the points also, I, I walk into restaurants or walk into a place and then you probably patronize. It's okay to, I do, you know, the once tip. in a while, tip, yeah. uh, which is not bad. Yeah, you but, know, so we, but we, tipping is different from if you don't want to get a COVID test, you know, pay this guy. Uh, How if, about if, the if one that just begs you say, bros, anything for us there? I mean, that, that's really, it's, no, not, that, even that one should stop. No, because it's, like it's, normally, it's, normally, you just say, ah, bros, fine, bros. Nothing. Alpha. <laughs> not for you. It's, All right. it's annoying. We, we need some It's annoying now. because I, I remember when I got my international passport. Mm. I paid about 43000 or so, maybe sometime, some, somewhere around that. But I went online and I saw that online, the, you know, the, the passport office basically says it's about seventeen or 13000 But when you get to the immigration office in Enugu, it's 43000 43, that they charge you. And I, I asked him eventually because I, I showed him, you know, that this isn't what he says. And he says, oh, you know, because you need to buy diesel. You know, they need to do oh, really? this, need to do that, you know, and that's why, you know, it is that high. And so you can imagine how much money they are making amongst themselves in that office. And imagine how much money is passing through the airports as isn't, isn't really government money or getting to the you know, government coffers or getting to the airline itself. So, yes, they need to do more, but I'm sure they know what to do if they really want to read, you know, their... The um, you know the whole of you know Nigeria's airports of soliciting bribes and 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 whatnot. Finally, a really sad story we are moving into. It's a three-year-old girl in a school in Ogun State. You know that was flogged by her teacher uh, for failing to write properly or spell properly. Her mother, her mother's name Elizabeth Ebere, you know, eventually put out a video and pictures of the child that fell sick after being flogged by her teacher in this school in Ogun State. Uh, she put out pictures on Facebook. She said that she, she initially had made uh, several complaints to the school and didn't get any response until she, she put out the information on Facebook. And of course, got, like I said, when you embarrass people, they take action in Nigeria. You, you need to shame them first publicly, then they will take action. And so she put this on Facebook and then the school eventually picked up the, uh, the case and, you know, it's, it's time to act. But it's, it's, I hope we have pictures to quickly share with you. It's a very, very, very shocking um, incident, you know, that happened in Ogun State. You can see the, the legs of the child, a three-year-old girl uh, with, um, you know, cane marks, you know, all over her legs. And, and I think there was also pictures of her uh, uh, temperature when she went to the hospital to show that she developed a, a slight fever after what happened in, in school. And Nigerians have been reacting and saying what would happen if it was there. A three-year-old three child that was flogged by a teacher in school for not being able to write. We have lost our humanity. And that is really sad. Really, because uh, like I always say, you actually, this is a case in the educational sector. And I know that some people will wake up with the fact that we are Africans and then you need to put a child straight. But you know, times are changing, we are evolving. And there are other means to have, for instance, if that's the case, the child cannot write. Have you ever wondered whether the child has uh, a learning issue you know, some people are slow to learn yeah. and all of that. So, I mean, being, beating the child, first of all, does that change the situation? Does it solve the problem? Would it make the child to write? So I don't know who we are again, but I know that we're losing human. I mean, humanity, we, we, we just, I don't know who we are anymore. So I don't, I and that's think... number one. Now, secondly, so let's even assume that a child has done something wrong and you need to correct. There are other means of, you know, meting punishment. And then you look at the, 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 the age 
right? That's a three-year-old. What can you do to a three-year-old? Let's assume that it was not the fact that she could write. In this particular case, she cannot write. Flogging the child is not the solution. It's not even acceptable. It's not the fact that she cannot write properly. What do you want a three-year-old to write for you? Uh, so yeah. we need to begin to look at that. Maybe from you know, our curriculum at the beginning, we need to begin to review all of that to uh, understanding that you know, this, is, this is a human being. Uh, because I don't know how the teacher involved, and the next question I ask myself is, do you have a child? That will be the next one. Uh, because I don't know where that bitterness is coming from. Sadly, it's really sad. Sadly, I don't think the idea of dyslexia, is it dyslexia or dyslexia? Dyslexia, I believe. Um, you know, which is, of course, a learning disorder um, for kids. I, I don't think that exists in, you know, the whole spectrum of Nigerian education system. Not they, entirely. They, not, I, I don't think it does. No, 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 not, not the case. But you would also find out that there are some people, whether it's dyslexia or not dyslexia, my point is you will still find some people who cannot comprehend at the same level you do comprehend. And maybe Absolutely. we're not able and, to uh, begin to put... My, my point is that they exist... Um, and of course, uh, kids who you know also have dyslexia exist. What, what I'm saying is, the Nigerian education system, I don't think it recognizes oh, yeah. you know those aspects sure. at all. Very and correct. so they would rather flog you into you know, into learning, you know, than actually understand that not every child is the same, and some ch children have learning you know disorders, and that may not necessarily even be the case with this child. Um, children, you know, are delicate, and they are, they they have their own. Sometimes it's just not in the mood to write, <laughs> you know, and. <laughs> So, and it may not be the case, you know, but it's one of the reasons we then have um, schools create some level of premium, special, you know, idea about them and then make their school fees two million naira a term because you would expect that when you take your children to those schools, they will be treated better. And these, these things that they're offering these children are things that should be normal. They should be expected. As a human being. As a human being. You know, the, the respect for that child, you know, as a human being are things that should be expected. But, you know, they now give their school, you know, Mangrove International, you know, Palm Grove. I hope that school you know, doesn't exist. I don't, I, it I don't know if there's a school <laughs> like that. You know, but Mangrove British International Palm Grove Waterside School. And then you go there and you pay... You know, eventually, I paying three million naira, you know, a year for, for you know, for, for a little child. For, for what you for, know, because of how they treat the child, yeah, because which is natural, which ought to come exactly. because you're a human being, and that's a baby, and you need to understand I, the fact that you know they are growing in stages. I mean, you have the fact that at a particular time they become very active or they become you know a certain way and all of that. Uh, when did you go to school again? Were you three when in, you entered in, in school? In, no, I, I mean, I school in Benin, but it were was you a, three? Were you three years old when you started school? Oh, yeah, of course I was. I, of course I went. I went through the whole ki kindergarten, KG one to three, and then all the way to primary five. Mm. Um, and yes, I, w I went to a pretty good school. My point, <laughs> or my last point, is um, we we also should remember that there are certain teachers mm. that take their trauma from home to school. So you get to school, and the fact that you and your husband fought that morning, you pour it on, you know, the little kids in it's school. Wrong. And 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 these are, I mean, th this you knew you would expect in a same society is assault, you know, and you should be arrested for it. You should be charged with assault for, you know, um, for you know, flogging that little child. But of course, in Nigeria, you would rather expect that the father, father the child's father, will go to school and fight, and then they call police, and eventually, um, you know, we yeah, will get to settle. We need to go anyway. Mm -hmm. um, Thanks for joining us and starting the day with us. We'll take a short break when we come back. Off the Press kicks off with uh, Ezekiel Iyai Talk, who joins us this morning. Stay with us.